Alright guys, this is the fourth and final video of the Maya Tank Rig tutorial series. In the last video, we set up our hull control, which gave us a pretty nifty hull suspension system. And we also set up our individual wheel controls, which we'll be using at the end of this video in an animation, and using them to conform to a uneven surface. Let's move on to the turret and get this tank finished. Uh, you want to create three joints. All of your joints are going to be uh, Z facing forward. First joint is going to be the barrel joint. And this is going to be positioned right in the center of your barrel. You can move it to the tip if you want, because then you can use it for muzzle flashes and a particle emitter too. Next joint is the barrel pivot joint. And this joint is exactly what it says in the name. It's going to be your barrel pivot point. So for up and down aiming, uh, your barrel pivot point and your barrel joint, I'll just mention, they need to be directly in line with each other. Uh, third joint is your turret joint, and this needs to go right in the center of your turret. All right, now we're going to parent the barrel joint to the barrel pivot joint, barrel pivot joint to the turret joint, and then we're going to take our three joints and skin them to our turret mesh. So we've got a bind skin, smooth bind, uh, bind to selected joints and max influences set to 3. Hit apply. Now we're going to do some point weighting because the current weights are not the greatest. So we're going to go up to Window, General Editors, Component Editor on the Smooth Skins tab. Now we're going to select the vertices that we want to be attached to the barrel. We're going to set those to 1. We get the vertices for the barrel pivot. Set those to 1, and the remaining points on the turret, we're going to assign those to 1 as well on the turret joint. We can close that, and now our point weights are set up correctly. Next thing we're going to do is parent our turret geometry to the geometry group, and also parent our turret joint to our hull joint. I'm just going to move that up there. And then we're going to create some form of a turret control. I just used a curve object. The important thing with this is that you position it directly in front of your barrel. So again, in line with these two joints, just give a nice gap. And you want to freeze all the transforms on it. You also want to remove all the attributes that you're not going to be using. So lock and hide those, the rotate, scale, and visibility. And you want to create two new attributes on it. These are both float attributes, and that's fire and recoil. I then go ahead and parent that control to the hull control. The next thing we're going to do is create four locators. Turn off the geometry for a second so we can take a look at those. Our first locator is your barrel aim point and this is going to be in the exact same position as your barrel pivot joint. Second locator is going to be the turret aim target point. This is going to be positioned directly below the turret control and aligned exactly to the same height as your turret joint. Third locator is the turret aim point, and this needs to go in the exact same position as your turret joint. The fourth locator, the turret up object, just goes directly above the turret joint. Doesn't matter what height it is, as long as it's higher than the tank. Once you have all those created, you want to parent your barrel aim point to the turret aim point. Now we're going to set up our aim constraints. So go up to constrain, aim, bring up the option box. We're going to aim our barrel aim point at our turret control. So we want to be aiming on the Z axis or the Z axis. So we're going to set X and Y to 0 and Z to 1. Our up vector is going to be Y because it's above. And we're going to be using object up as our world up type and we're going to be using the turret up object as our world up object. So you can paste that name in there. And then we're going to grab our turret control and our barrel aim point and hit apply. And with the exact same settings, we're going to grab our turret aim target point and our turret aim point and just hit apply. Next thing we're going to do is point constraint our turret aim target point to our turret control. So we're going to grab the options of the point constraint and we want to use X and Z only so we're going to grab our turret control 
and our tar aim target point and hit apply. And now we're going to connect our joints to the locators. So let's open up the node editor and we're going to select our barrel pivot joint and our turret joint and also our two aim points, the barrel and turret, and we're just going to add those. And we are going to connect our turret aim point rotate Y and connect that to our turret joints rotation Y and the barrel aim point rotate X to the barrel pivot joint rotate X. So now if we unhide the geometry, we should see our turret now working correctly in uh, any direction that we point this. Next thing we're going to do is create a new group. I call it turret aim group. And you want to parent your locators, your turret locators, into this group and then parent that group to the rig group. And then we need to parent constrain our turret aim group to our drive control. So grab the drive control and the turret aim group and hit apply on your parent constraint. The next thing we're going to do is hide the geometry again and we're going to create two more locators. And the first locator is going to be called the hull range point and this is going to be positioned directly below your turret control in line with height wise the hull joint. So in the exact same height as your hull joint, very important. And the second locator is the hull recoil point, and this just goes in the exact same position as your hull joint. We're going to constrain our hull range point to the turret aim point. So grab your turret aim point and your hull range point and hit constrain parent apply. What this does is it creates a range, gives us back uh, some translation values that we can then convert to rotation on our recoil point, which is kind of cool actually. I'll show you how that works. So open the node editor and we're going to grab our two new locators, the hull range point and hull recoil point, and we're going to add those. And our hull range point is going to be using its position value to drive the rotation of the recoil point. But we need to add a node in between, a multiply divide node, which we can use to dampen the values. So I'm just going to call that hull multiply divide. And we're going to connect the hull range points translate attribute, which is all three axes. And we're going to connect that directly into the input one. Open our multiply divide node, set this to divide. And we're going to dampen the x value by about 50 and the z value by negative 50. Then we're going to connect our output x from the multiply divide and we're going to plug that into our hull recoil points rotation z so the opposite rotation and we're going to grab our output z and plug that into our rotation x now you can see that the hull recoil point popped backwards and this now is always going to be pointing away from our turret control so i'm not sure you can see that but wherever we move this our uh, hull recoil point is going to be pointing away from it and this creates a reference point for our hull joint to attach to whenever we need the recoil. So the next thing we're going to do is create a second orient constraint on our hull joint. So we're going to go constrain orient. So grab the hull recoil point and your hull joint and then just hit apply with maintain offset turned off. Now you'll see that the hull joint shifted back and now it's kind of split the difference between the two rotational values because it's getting the influence from both points. So if we play with these values real quick, if I turn off the hull recoil point influence with the zero, it's now using the hull control to dictate its orientation. And then again, if we switch those values, it now uses the hull recoil point as its source for rotation connection. So we want to be able to control these with a single attribute in a kind of a blend that we can animate. So we're going to go back to the node editor and frame the hull joint. And we have our orient constraint right here and our turret control right here. So we're just going to be using these two. And we're going to connect our recoil attribute directly into our hull recoil W1 attribute. And we're going to create a new node now called a reverse node. 
So under utilities again, you're going to find the reverse node. I'm going to call this recoil reverse. And we're going to connect our recoil attribute into the input X of the recoil reverse and the output X into our other constraint attribute, the hull control W0. So now if we unhide our geometry, we have our recoil attribute giving us the ability to shift our tank back and forth. And if we set it to a prominent position, you can see now that the hull shifts in the direction that we're aiming our turret. Now that we have that set up, we can parent our hull range point and hull recoil point to our turret aim group, and then tuck that away. And now we're going to set up our fire attribute and get some automated fire action going on. We're going to use a set driven key for that. First, I'm just going to delete this empty group here. And we're going to go up to animate, set driven keys, and bring up the set window. We're going to frame our turret control as the driver, use the fire attribute, and our driven is going to be our barrel joint. So load driven, and we're going to use the translate Z or Z. So we're going to hit a key, then we're going to set our fire attribute to 50, and we're going to hit another key. Now we're going to change our driven to our turret control, so just hit driven with our turret control still selected, and we're going to select the recoil attribute. So you're going to hit key, and then we're going to set our fire attribute back to zero, and hit key again. Uh, what did we just do? We just created two flat set driven key curves on our barrel joint and our turret control. So we need to access those right now, so we're going to go into the node editor, we're going to hit frame, and we see our two curves. So select those and we're going to create a selection set. So we hit create sets set open the option box and we're just going to call this set driven keys. Hit apply. Now we can close our node editor and what we just did is created very easy access to these curves when we animate these. It's going to make life a lot easier when you're tweaking these animations. So we're going to open the graph editor and I'm going to use the layout button on the side just because I'm out of room. Then select your turret control, set a key on the fire attribute, shift your timeline all the way to 50, set the fire attribute to 50 as well, and set another key. And the curve that we get, we're going to set that to linear. And now we can preview our set driven key by using this temporary animation curve that we just created. So let's select the barrel joint translate Z or Z and select your curve. And we're going to use the insert key tool. And we're just going to create four points on our curve. And we're going to use these points to sculpt a tapered wave that represents our secondary motion, the recoil. So something like that should work. Now if we hit play, we'll see our barrel shoot back. Now we're going to move on to the turret control recoil curve. So we're going to frame that, select the curve, then use the insert key tool, and we're going to insert eight points. And we're going to use these points across the entire span of the curve. The first point, you probably want to keep at zero, but just shift it over to frame two. And then that basically gives us that delay. So when the barrel kicks back first, then the hull is going to follow. So we can move to frame five and preview how far we want this tank to shift back. And the rest of this we can just kind of eyeball and play with. Yeah, you're just basically creating a tapered wave again, just like you did on the barrel, but extending it out a little bit further. And we want it to slow down as time progresses. So I'm just gonna have to shift these over a little bit. All right, that should look pretty good. I don't know, we'll see. Not too bad, could be better. You could sit there and tweak this till it's perfect, but uh, for now, as much as I want to keep tweaking this, I've got to move on. It's a little bit better. All right, so now we can come out of the graph editor. We can close our set driven keys. You can always go back to them to tweak it. And we're going to select all of our controls, create a second selection set. We're going to call it controls, apply. And now we can just hide our joints and pack up our rig. And we have our final tank control rig ready to go. And you can animate this and do whatever you want with it. 
So we're going to go ahead and animate it. Create a polyplane. Give it some subdivisions. And you want to use soft selection and move some of these points around so we can create some unevenness. I'll be real quick. Should be good enough. Enhance that a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to use geometry constraints. So select your ground plane and each wheel control and hit apply. Same for the other side. Now when you move your drive control, the wheels conform to the terrain. We're going to start our animation at the front here. It's going to select all these controls and key it. I'm also going to give us a little bit more room on this timeline. We're going to reverse our tank to about here. Let's start aiming our turret. Finish aiming over here somewhere. And then we're going to fire the gun. So our animation looks like this. Tank reverses and fires. And we're also going to now add some motion to our hull as we go over some of these bumps. Something real quick. There we go. Now that looks beautiful. Now we're going to export this. Go up to Edit, Keys, Bake Simulation, open the option box. This is the exact process you do just to export any animation that you do, the exact same thing. And you want to make sure your hierarchy is set to below and then just hit apply. So now your animation is going to play as it bakes to keys. And now all you need to do to export this is you can grab your geometry group and your root joint and move them outside of the tank rig group and now delete everything else you can just delete it well unless you want to keep your ground plane you can keep that too now everything's baked in there's no uh, rig nodes attached to anything it's just all joint based animation if you select all these and hit export selection you will have a clean FBX or a Lembic uh, export that you can then drop into another piece of software or game engine. And you shouldn't have any issues. Actually, it should be pretty clean and straightforward. So that concludes our tank rigging tutorial from Maya. I hope everything went well for you and you have a fully rigged tank. Uh, if you enjoyed this and it was helpful to you, please like it and subscribe because that tells me this was worthwhile. Drop a comment below and let me know if you actually used this uh, Maya file that I supplied on my website. I just want to make sure that this was something that people were doing because I thought it was a very interesting way of uh, getting right into it so that you guys can just learn what you need to and then apply that to your own tanks. With that said, I will see you soon and thanks again for watching.